matter of fact not only am i pregnant i'm pregnant pregnant hey guys welcome and welcome back to my channel my name is hawa Bunga. for all of my returning ninjas what's up if you're not a ninja go ahead and hit that subscribe button and join the gang honey as you can tell from the title i am going to be sharing with you all my story time about how i didn't know i was a pregnant my teen pregnancy story my thought thought story <laughs> This is like, no, y'all, I was not a thought, okay? I have my notes here so that I could kind of stay on track because I don't want to blabber. I just want to get straight to the point, but let's get out the disclaimers right now. Um, I know this may be a sensitive subject topic for some. I hope my story don't offend anyone. My personality, I like to laugh and joke or whatever, and I, that's how I make light of the situation. And this is something that happened, you know, in my past. So the past, the past. We're in the present 2020 going into 2021, honey. So we're over it. Second disclaimer is uh, I'm not too sure about the exact timeline. So just bear with me when it comes to dates and stuff like that. So anyways, let's just hop right into the story, okay? So, oh gosh, the sun is coming out and killing my vibes. Hold on. So I met my boyfriend in high school and we ended up going to the same college and then it was not planned. In college, you know, things happen, stuff happen. You think you're grown, you be drinking, you be doing all this stuff. And that was me in college, you know. College is college, y'all know. Um, This was my freshman year in college and around this time, me and my boyfriend was fighting. We were not talking. I think we're actually broken up at this time. Um, But I kept waking up with very sore boobs like when I woke up and I lifted myself off the bed it literally felt like my boobs were going to separate from my body they were that heavy and they felt like rocks and I was like what is going on but me back then you know um, I didn't think anything up y'all don't know I do have sickle cell anemia which is a disease that I was a born with so I'm like oh maybe it's just my pain from my sickle cell so I just didn't think anything of it but it kept happening every day in the morning after the morning time it would completely go away so that's why for the most part I was just like oh you know it is nothing or whatever but eventually i ended up as talking to my sister i'm like hey like i keep waking up and my boobs are like super sore and they hurt really bad i don't know what's going on and then she was like well it either could be two things either it could be from what i know it could be like a pregnancy or it could be like that you have some type of like cyst in your boobs or something like that because that happens when you have cysts so i'm like mm, let me pick my poison it's gonna be the cyst you know what i mean i just automatically would like oh it's the cyst it's not pregnancy like i'm not pregnant i cannot be pregnant i would look it up and like on google like being the do google doctor i'm always like googling shit but because you know i was in college and i didn't you know they had like um we had like a nurse on site and stuff like that and if it wasn't serious like i didn't want to miss class or anything like that so i would just look it up and out and to see if it's something that's serious and if, if i need to go to the hospital if it's something that's curable um but like when i was looking at the symptoms a lot of people a lot of like the articles and stuff that was coming up kept like pointing to pregnancy and stuff like that but the symptoms also reflected the cyst or whatever so i was still going along with it's the cyst so i was like it can't be pregnancy because i don't feel nauseous um i haven't missed my cycle um, I always had irregular cycles and it's just still has been consistent to this day. So I know it's not pregnancy. This is around like April, May-ish or whatever. Um, I also like around this time, like I started to lose weight and which was weird because I was eating a lot, but I was just losing weight and i just found that that was weird because most of the time when you go to college you get freshman 15 you don't lose weight like everybody around me was gaining weight like looking thick and shit and i was all a hundred and something pounds looking dumb so <laughs> i just found this weird so i was like well let me just you know use process elimination let me just make sure as it says i'm just gonna you know take a pregnancy test but y'all mind y'all again i'm a freshman in college i'm broke as 
I'm broke. Um, my father gave me a credit card to use only for emergencies, y'all. I was splurging. I was buying other people's stuff with that credit card. Like, I was going to McDonald's, like, every day. I was going to the mall. I was going to walmart every day shopping for like the little college parties like i maxed my credit card out baby like it was not a game i maxed that joint out so i was broke i was like how to i'm about to get a pregnancy test so y'all i went to frostbury state university if y'all don't know it's in the mountains in maryland is literally nothing around there but the walmart the walmart up there was lit it had like it had nail salon and it had mcdonald's in it it was just a great walmart or whatever so i'm like i might go to walmart <laughs> With no money y'all i went to walmart with no money so catch the hint so i went to walmart y'all and i had on a hoodie like this and i best i basically stuffed my hoodie with pregnancy tests and y'all i got the expensive pregnancy test because i ain't i'm not about to read no lines i'm not fitting to read no lines i got the joint that say pregnant or not pregnant you need to tell me up front i need to know up front i don't want to read no lines i want and if i'm gonna steal i might as well steal the best ones god forgive me this was years ago like i'm not that person anymore i had to do what i had to do okay anyways <laughs> So I'm like, if I'm going to steal, I'm going to steal the best one. So I stole probably like a two or three or whatever. The box comes with two. So I went to Walmart and I stole. And I was by myself. Nobody knew to this day. Nobody knows. So my family, whoever about to find out right now, yeah, I was a little thief. Again, I had to do what I had to do, baby. Um, So I went back to my dorm, y'all. I went to Lua, the communal bathroom. I peed, I peed on the stick. The first one, the first test I took, that joint didn't say and it didn't say anything. It was just blank. It was just like literally it didn't say pregnant and it say no preg not pregnant. It just was blank and I let it sit for a while. It just was blank. So I took another one right back to back. Y'all, I had a drink like all of this. It was like the episode of Martin, like when she was like when he gave her root beer to drink because like I had already peed and I ain't had pee no more. So I was like down in like soda so I could have to go to the bathroom again. So I down some soda and then when I had to pee again, I went back and I peed on the stick. And this time, before I even could finish peeing, y'all. Before I could finish peeing, y'all, that joint said pregnant. So I know y'all probably like, well, bitch, you knew you was pregnant. Like, no. Just to give you a quick background as why I was like, I didn't know I was pregnant is because one, I was delusional for a long time, which you'll see further into the story. And two, I conceived in February. Yes, y'all, February. So February, March, April. Y'all will see how I found out and how this came together. So follow me, stick with me. So again, like I told y'all, me and my boyfriend, we weren't talking, we weren't speaking, we were broken up. So I hit him up, I called him, I was like, yo, come to my dorm, like, right now, like, we gotta talk. And he was like, for what? Like, he was giving me all this attitude and sass, you know, because we were beefing. And I was like, it's really, like, it's important, I really gotta tell you something, we gotta talk about something. And I guess he thought, like, I wanted to just talk about our relationship and stuff. Like, boy, you're not that cute. <laughs> I'm like, no, like, you need to come. It's an emergency. And then he was like, no, nah, I'm not going over there, blah, blah, blah. I was like, well, you don't come over here. I'm going to come over there. And if I come over there, you ain't going to like it. It's not going to be pretty. And I'm going to embarrass you in front of your roommate, okay? So <laughs> he ended up coming over there. And I basically, I was just like, I just gave him the pregnancy test. And he was like, well, this is me. I said, nigga, I did get the one with lines. It literally says pregnant over there. Like, Ill, and you ain't got to read too much. It's, it's pregnant. So what you mean? What do you mean? Like, duh. So he was like, you sure? Did you take multiple? I was like, well, I took two. The other one was inclus inconclusive. And then I took this one. And then and we like, we both were like crying. We were like, oh, this can't be happening. Blah, blah, blah. Because, you know, he played football. This was our first year in college. Like, we were upset. But basically came up with a dumbass plan that like, we're just going to, you know, wait until we go home so that I could go to the clinic go to the doctor and get like a blood work done to confirm it and then we could basically go from there so our dumbasses basically just swept the shit under the rug but I still was kind of delusional and I was like I can't be pregnant because I'm still having my cycles to this day even when I found out 
even when it says pregnant i was still having my cycles i didn't have any type of morning sickness um other the only symptom that i had was the sore boob thing and i guess me losing weight but that didn't necessarily have to do have to be pregnancy or whatever we went home from school for the summer probably in for the end of may we basically waited like a whole nother month or whatever it is we went so we left school we went home for the summer and um mind y'all when i was at school i was still doing whatever because i did not i did not think or know that i was pregnant for sure because we was like well the first one was inconclusive the second one said pregnant but we don't know for sure so i was i was going to hershey park i think i'm still going on parties i'm still going to play i was just doing do so i went to the clinic with my friend and um they'll do a blood work and they do a sonogram right then and there so if you're if the baby is big enough then they'll see it on the sonogram if not they won't and then you'll just have to wait for the blood work to come back so they do both so i did the blood work and then i did the sonogram or whatever so they did a sonogram and lo and behold it was a baby it was a whole freaking baby in my tummy and y'all not only was it a baby we know that months went by like i gave y'all a hint before I was like, February, February, March, April, May. I was far along in my pregnancy. Like, I was far along. And, again, I didn't have no symptoms. I wasn't showing, like, nothing. So, I was like, y'all, I was still like, no, I can't be pregnant because I still have my cycles. They was, they was like, oh, you can still, like, bleed monthly, but it's not really a menstrual cycle. It's called something else. If I find the name, I'll link it on, link it on the screen. But... It's called something else, but it's not your monthly cycle. It's something else. They were like, you didn't notice that it was irregular, like it was lighter. But no, because my cycles always have been like that. They always have been irregular. They never came on time. They were always light and I barely cramped or whatever. That's how it had been my whole life. So it going from this to this, whatever this was, it wasn't a real change for me. So I was just like, oh, it's, you know, it's my cycle. So I was like, what are my options? Like, would I be able to get, a, like, an abortion if, you know, that's the route I want to take? Because <laughs> I'm in college. Like, I'm not married. I'm not engaged. I'm young. Like, that was definitely an option. And they were like, yeah, you could get an abortion. However, it will be a different procedure. So they were basically saying that I was too far along in my pregnancy to do the standard abortion or whatever so it's this next level abortion i'll go back then where it would take like a few weeks to abort the baby it's kind of like having labor almost or whatever so they dilate you so they put these rods this is going to be a tmi part disclaimer this is tmi if you don't want to watch this part you can fast forward it <laughs> so they put these rods in your kuha in your uterus um and you come back each week or each, every couple of days or every week or something and they give you a bigger rot and they put it insert a bigger rot and this is basically dilating this is basically helping you dilate so that they could go in and suck the baby out at the end so the standard abortion is about like 300 400 dollars back then i don't know what it is now this procedure would have been like in the thousands like that a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars Y'all, I didn't even have enough money for a pregnancy test. Like, where the f am I going to get $1,000 from to, do, to have abortion? Where am I to get money from to have a baby, period? Like, either way, I was in a f***ed up situation. I was very screwed. <laughs> we were very screwed. I'm leaving that day. I called my boyfriend. I let him know, like, hey, this is what's going on. I am pregnant. Matter of fact, not only am I pregnant, I'm pregnant, pregnant. We wanted to go along with the procedure. Um, however, we didn't have the money. We basically got in a fight again on who was going to ask who parents for the money. I was like, yo, if I ask my parents, we're both going to die. And everything is going to be taken care of because... Do you know who my parents are? Y'all know my parents. I am from a very cultural background. My parents are from West Africa. Standards are very high and always been very high. And they uphold their kids to that standard. And I was like, I can't tell them. To be honest, the only reason why I'm getting this abortion is so that they don't find out. So if I tell them, this is my thinking back then. So if I tell them, I might as well just keep the baby. Like because they're going to disown me and 
at least I'll have a baby out of it. <laughs> I won't have my parents anymore, but I have a baby. You know what I mean? So we ended up coming to an agreement that we would tell his mom and ask his mom for the money to help us. He had the cooler mom anyway. Like she is so freaking cool. She's understanding. He tells her and then the next day we both go over to her house and we have a conversation and she's basically like okay i'll give you all the money but how i don't feel comfortable with you going through this procedure does not a standard abortion then your parents don't know because anything could happen like there could be complications you could pass away god forbid that doesn't happen but anything that can happen and i don't feel comfortable with me knowing and going to get this procedure and your parents don't know which is completely understandable and logically you know is a logical thinking but i was like no like no 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 not happening no never not gonna happen sisters i was like well how about i tell my sisters because at least somebody in my family would know and i just won't be going there with nobody in my family no she said okay that's fine she agreed with that boom you want to tell your sisters i ended up telling my sisters and they literally was like trying to talk me out of getting the abortion they'd be like no like one of my sisters was even like like i'll adopt the baby like because i was saying like i can't have a baby like mom and dad is going to disown me i gotta finish school i'm just a freshman in college like i don't have any money i don't have anything to my name like no i'm not keeping this baby they literally was like you sure? You sure? You sure? You sure? I was like, yes, like, yes, 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 yes. Even though in the back of my mind, it's not something that I wanted to do, but it's just the thing that made more sense to me at that time. I went to the appointment to get this procedure. Hey guys, if you want to see more story times and videos like this, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and subscribe to my channel right now. Thank you. The first sonogram, it was different. Um because i didn't see the sonogram like they were behind me back here this time the sonogram was here like i can see the baby on the screen like when they did that or whatever and i feel like they do that shit on purpose because like once i saw the baby on the screen like i felt numb like i felt nauseous and numb and so many things that went through my mind my feelings just completely shifted and changed it was weird the doctor came in and started trying to explaining the procedure to me and as he's explaining it i literally don't hear anything he's saying i just see his mouth moving but i don't hear anything he's saying it's just like and i wasn't feeling it like i got so scared and nervous and something just told me like i just felt like a big baseball in my throat and something just told me like i just felt like i heard like god speak to me or something somebody spoke to me and said don't do this like this is not the answer don't do this not a good idea y'all i left i ran out of there it was like I didn't end up getting the procedure like I just couldn't go through with it whatever like it was a full-blown baby that I could see like I was just like well I'm just gonna struggle um me and my boyfriend decided to keep the baby he was definitely supportive of my decision and he agreed that he would be there and help me and my sisters the same way they like thank god you didn't do it oh my boyfriend his sister was saying the same thing like when she found out um before I decided to keep it. She was like, no, don't do it. Like, I'll help you. Like, she was living in a different state at the time. And she was like, she would move back. So my support system was awesome, right? Um, awesome at that time. And it made me feel better about my decision. The only thing is, I had to tell my parents now. <laughs> fun, right? No, not fun. I was basically a grown-ass woman. Yes, I was in college, but I was like 18, 19. And I'm literally freaking scared of my parents. Like, I didn't tell my parents. I convinced my sisters to tell them because I couldn't do it. So, at this time, I was back home. So, I was living with my parents in their house. And I had left. I went to my sister's house while I told them. I told my parents that I had to go to the mall or something. I know I'm going to my sister's house. And my sisters went to their house to tell them to the, tell them the news and y'all i was so nervous like i was sitting in my sister's house like sweating like 
walking back and forth so they called me and they were like up oh, the deed is done like we did it and then i was like so what did they say and they were like it's not good like it's not good they told me my mom's reaction like my mom burst out crying like they're so upset at me they literally just they disowned me like my father had gifted me a car when i was in high school going into college and he took my car from me i had a cell phone that i was under his plan because i was in college he cut my cell phone off they practically kicked me off the house so i had to go get my stuff and i moved in with my sister and they didn't talk to me it was just like i just felt like i was bringing a human being into this world and that's what god wanted for me at that time it was a blessing in disguise um and to this day my son is a blessing like everything that happened to me from that time on all happened for a reason and it made me the person that i am today i'm definitely a stronger fighter more confident in myself like everything like everything happens for a reason so i also just hope this story my story um someone can relate to it and know that whatever decision you make in your life whether it's pregnancy job whatever you can get through it and you will be all right like at the end of the day if somebody hates you you'll be all right like even my friends my friends was like don't do it get an abortion don't have a baby you're you're gonna ruin your life you got so much going for you you want to do this you want to because at the time my goal was to be an actress and i wanted to move to new york and i wanted to go to atlanta and i wanted to go to la i wanted to travel whatever they're like like you're not going to be able to do, do that anymore you're throwing away your life like don't do it so when i end up going going along keeping the baby like some of my friends even stopped talking to me which was weird because i felt like whether that was my decision or not i feel like it should have been supporting me whatever my decision was as my as my friend however i understand because back then we were young and i feel like if it was a vice versa i would say the same thing because i want the best for them and they wanted the best for me and i feel like they thought at that time that that's not the best for me which is completely understandable so i was just in a messed up situation because my parents wasn't talking to me i didn't really have no friends all i had was my boyfriend and i guess like my sisters or whatever but i'm really thankful for my sisters for talking me out of it i'm really thankful for my sister for letting me live with her like while my parents kicked me out since i decided to kick keep the baby that following week i had a um appointment for my first prenatal appointment and my sister nurse and she worked at georgetown hospital so she was able to get me my all of my doctors in that hospital like everything was in the same hospital which was awesome for me because you know i didn't have a car anymore so when i went i just did all of my appointments at the same time so when i went for my first sonogram appointment my first sonogram appointment i found out the sex like that's how far along I was and it was a boy um but this time it was supposed to be a happy moment for me like I found out the sex of my baby but I was still so sad because I wanted to share news with my friends I wanted to share news with my mom my dad whatever but I didn't even have a phone to call them on so it hit me I'm like oh let me tell my sister oh I don't have a phone like it just hit me like I don't even have a phone to call them on I don't even I can't even tell my mom and my dad because they're not talking to me so I was like really like sad like I during this time I was I was happy and I was happy about my decision but I was very like depressed too because thing it didn't go the way I wanted it to go of course i was in time in my life where i wasn't ready to have a baby i had to figure things out financially where i'm gonna live how we gonna pay for the baby um stuff daycare all of that then also had to think about my schooling and that was a big thing my parents were concerned about well you're not gonna be able to finish school everybody in our community knows everything could find out everything and they were embarrassed by it like your daughter got pregnant it's not married blah 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 so they were more so embarrassed about that but i was telling them like i'm still gonna graduate from school like i'm gonna do what i have to do like i promise y'all like i'm and it's not even about y'all it's about me like i'm the type of person that if i want to do something i'm gonna do it like even if it kills me i'm gonna do it it's like get rich or die trying bitch <laughs> shout out to 50 cent um, i'm like i'm gonna finish school like it's gonna be a struggle i'm gonna find a way 
to finish college. Like, I'm going to do it. Like I mentioned before, I had sickle cell. So, a little further into my pregnancy, maybe when I was, just like, seven months, I started to have a real bad sickle cell crisis. Um, and I was hospitalized a lot. Like, I was in the hospital majority of my pregnancy. And this is what brought my parents around. So, my parents start to come back around because it's like, they're not that type of people that's going to know that I'm in the hospital. I'm sick and stuff like that and not come. I feel like they was mad at me, but they weren't that mad at me to the point that they know that I'm in a hospital suffering from sickle cell crisis from my disease and not show up and be there. I did end up having my son with my husband, my boyfriend at that time, is also my husband now. So, again, like I was saying, like, everything happens for a reason. And I feel like even if we didn't have my son at that time and we didn't go through what we went through back then, we wouldn't be where we are now. And we wouldn't be as strong as a couple as we went as we are now because we went through that at a young age. We went through some crazy sh at a young age now we're in a great position in our lives it's not perfect it would never be perfect i don't think but it's not horrible it's not bad we made it through it and i just again i just want to share my story y'all should know yeah i want y'all to get to know me as just to let y'all know this was in 2008 my son is now 12 years old y'all <laughs> my pregnancy and my pregnancy and my uh birth story is crazy so let me know in the comments if you want to see a story time part two the end of my pregnancy leading to my birth story and my birth story my birth story was crazy y'all like uh, that is the story i hope you all really enjoyed my story and if you're not already again subscribe to my channel join the gang and i will catch you all in my next video bye